have our little do do happy doggy here. Yes. <laughs> Ralphie, say hi. He knows he's in the camera. Um, it's good to be the famous. Yes. <laughs> Good morning, my dear gardening friends. One of the hidden jewels of Connecticut gardens is Blau Gardens, Blau House and Gardens. And today we are going to tour this hidden garden, which is in the uh, private ownership for many years. So public could not see it, but today we are going to walk in and Emily and Robert, who are the stewards of this beautiful gem of a, of a garden, will show us all the beautiful rhododendrons and plantings. Hi, Emily and Robert. Hi, Hi Olga. Olga. Thank you for allowing us to yeah, come to your garden. Welcome. Thank yes. you. For Emily, I know that you lived in this garden for many years, that you grew up among all these beautiful trees and garden rooms. Well, actually, when I was a kid, this was all woods. So this wasn't here, um, but this was more developed around in like the like the Late 80s, 90s, 90s you know, and then. But the first thing that my dad did when um, when we moved in in, in uh, like 1963 was uh, he he put the, these rhododendrons around the, the perimeter of the property. And so, so these are all from, from the 60s, these, uh, these rhododendrons. They're and, definitely bringing and a so, lot of color now at this time of the year, right? Yes. Yeah, so different parts of it were developed, um, actually, you know, some in response to family events. Um, uh, when we, you'll see when we go to the, to the back, um, that was really, it was built uh, for my sister's wedding. Over the years, my dad would sort of take a portion and, um, and develop it as a garden. So it kind of happened little by little over time. Um, so uh, it was more like, like, when, like when I was off in college, that's when like, I'd come home and there would be like, these major changes to, to the, the garden. And you know, it's nice because like I probably never even came here when I was a kid because it was all so heavily wooded. But it's um, mm -hmm. you know now you can enjoy you know so much of the property. It's, yes, yeah. the maturity of the garden, right? Which is so hard to to find in yes. a lot of gardens. Yes. And your dad had that vision at the time when a lot of American gardens were grass, right? And yeah, foundation that, that, planting. That, that's the amazing thing that you know still astounds me that he. Um, and he grew up in the Bronx, so he obviously like, like his his childhood did not include gardens. Mm -hmm. But he um, through he he worked for um, different people who I think inspired. Well, he he worked for at the New York Botanical Gardens when he was uh, a teen. One of his clients was like the Burpee Seed Company mm -hmm. and um, Miracle Grow. So he, he, his, his, he had his dips in gardening, yeah, so right? His, his career sort of intersected with gardens, but he was always like looking at garden books and, um, and he did work with designers as well. And because he was a busy guy, I mean, I was <laughs> telling your husband, he was, you know, working night and day just developing his, his um, advertising business. So How about your mom? Was she the gardener? My, no, no. She didn't no, like gardens? No, Did she no, enjoy they, the gardens? They had, they had a, um, like a very sort of like nice division of, of labor in their marriage. And she was really in charge of the interiors and he was the exteriors. And, right. <laughs> and it worked out really well. This is really a nice time to, to appreciate the um, just like uh, the abundance, because I kind of see it as as almost like the um, the complete um, antithesis to to his child, which you know when he was a kid uh, he didn't have blankets, and his father had to put his his jacket oh, you know on him to to keep him warm at night. And so like when you see like this garden, I think this represented like you know success and 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 excess. You know, just like everywhere you look, there's the, like some gorgeous bloom. And everywhere I walk, it's difficult to believe that this property is only two acres. Yes. Because there are nooks yes. and crannies everywhere and right. surprises around the corner. Right. Yes. Well, my, dad, yeah. my dad was very dramatic. And he, he was. He really okay. appreciated drama. 
Um, and I mean, you know, in life he was like, you know, sort of a larger than life kind of, kind of person. Um, uh, so yes, that was uh, definitely, um, you know, part of who he was. So I think you're, you're sort of appreciating part of his personality, like that, that drama, that surprise. Well, Blau Gardens were in private ownership for many, many years, 50 years. And now that I know that situation is changing. Do yeah. you mind sharing with us what's going on? Sure. You know, um, at, when my dad was, was um, getting older and, you know, like the last couple of years, um, he asked me to save the mm. property and to make it accessible to the public. And he envisioned that there'd be poetry readings and chamber music, and he 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 wanted to share it with with the with the community and um, and make it a place where where people could you know experience garden enjoyment, but also also the arts, and um, and he didn't exactly tell us how to do it, but he just wanted it done. <laughs> yes. And um, and I you know I'd worked for my dad for many years. Uh, so, so I was used to sort of him giving me orders and, you know, and so, so he passed and so, but I took it as like an order, like, you know, I got to get this done. And um, so, so Robert and I started uh, Blau House and Gardens, it was a public charity, to, to raise the money to, to purchase the house from, um, for which now, you know, my um, family's estate. And um, so that's what we're, we're trying to do. So you can see that this garden was a project of a lifetime for your dad, yes. and it's worth saving in this in this stage. I, I see it as as um, he, you know he had a vision. He had a vision that this was going to be um, uh, a value to 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 the the public, and and that and I, I agree. I think what he achieved is is remarkable, and I, I think that it would be really nice to be able to continue to share it, uh, you know, for as forever. Yeah. So, uh, so that's that's our goal. Yeah. To tell you more about the house, the, the, there's an unusual, a special rectangular pattern railing at the top of the stair, and the stair railing that comes down that repeats in the large uh, vertical opening that exposes the stair, and that's unusual for the house, and that. Those vertical rectangular win windows help to celebrate the verticality and grandeur of the great white oaks. The commanding view of the three white oaks, there are three actors on a stage. Uh, Allswang must have understood this term because they are uh, a feature as you enter the front door of the house and that they are viewed from inside the house as you travel up and down the stair um, and also from the living room. He was a, um, a very um, inspired by a Rothschild garden from his travels and that uh, those gardens have nine distinctive different rooms and those uh, uh, gardens really inspired him to uh, develop formal and informal rooms that you, you walk through from one uh, garden to the other. Uh, Barry first arrived to Westport with his uh, wife Eileen um, because they were uh, looking to uh, live outside of the city and to try country living and a number of people were doing that in the mid-century and we were we were <laughs> we were trying to they were trying to um, to appreciate nature and I think that was really one of the special things about why people found Westport because um, not only were there artists here um, and it was a very creative community but also um, uh, all the artists um, came out here to appreciate nature and uh, the uh, way in which Barry also um, got the garden started was when they, uh, Eileen Barry arrived uh, they met Ralph Allswang and learned about how the house had the, these connections and responded to nature and to the views of the, the great oaks. And that those great oaks, interestingly, have deep roots and that the 
uh, rhododendrons themselves have shallow roots. So let's go to the sunken garden and um, check that out. <laughs> I'll open the gate for you. Thank you. Yeah. Very developed these, uh, this um, sunken garden, which has uh, a fountain, but it also has uh, boxwoods that uh, corral roses. And it's sunken because there's a, a large retaining wall that holds back earth from this addition, which is a, a pool house addition that was added in 1985. So the boxwoods were planted around that time. There's a stair over this way. And then there's this gate that uh, we just came through. And there are beautiful benches throughout the garden that allow one to have a peaceful and uh, more intimate experience with the garden. And usually there's a special view that you have when you sit down that proportionally allows you to experience the garden. From here, you can have a great view of uh, the, the three oaks five oaks that surround the house and you can get a sense of them all surrounding the house. There's the three that are actually create an axis here uh, and an entry point into the sunken garden and um, one of them hovers over the house and another one back there is, is um, kind of framed by the, the one hovering over the house and the three uh, that are in line with this axis. Yeah, come this way, and this is an entry point to the garden, which gives a commanding view down over the parterre that is made out of boxwoods that corral the roses, and that there is punctuated by containers that are filled with annuals, and, and then we have our little do happy, do happy, happy doggy doggy here. Yes. <laughs> Ralphie, say hi. He knows he's in the camera. And so as we come down, there's uh, the, the entire parterre has brick that is uh, lining, creating all the walkways between the boxwoods. And the boxwoods are trimmed when uh, there's no sun, so they don't uh, get um, brown leaves. And uh, there's a, a beautiful view from about where if you turn around this way, you could see the front door. There's a beautiful view from here back at the house and that beautiful large rhododendron. And there's beautiful shadows on the house. And you could see the railing that I talked about earlier. The same rectangular pattern carries along that um, entry uh, stair to, on the outside. So let's go to the new fountain circle that's very peaceful. So this uh, is the Asian garden. It was um, uh, originally a dry garden where the stream was, had uh, stones and gravel in it, and then it eventually became uh, an actual water uh, garden. Um, and it has a small waterfall next to a Buddha um, that is a standing Buddha. And um, it's uh, uh, surrounded by, uh, uh, Cornus controversa variegata and Japanese maples that create a kind of um, division but also um, join together two views. So there's a, the waterfall and the Buddha and then there's another view of an island. It's beautifully, it, it's a, very sculptural. And uh, a lantern next to a uh, red bridge that actually is painted the same color as the Japanese maple that um, in the winter um, has a, a similar bark color. So let me explain the gardens that were influenced and inspired by the Roman theater. So this, uh, these gardens 
Barry learned from uh, Roman history and appreciated figures in, in Roman history, especially writers and politicians. And uh, he also worked with uh, a designer to help develop the, these gardens that are two terraced gardens and that the terrace has a proportion similar to a proscenium in a Roman uh, stage and that the Roman stages actually were had a precedent of being developed first by the Greeks and the Greeks um, uh, developed a proscenium but also something called a sine frons and the sine frons created a, a backdrop behind um, the, the narrow uh, uh, stage and so this has a, a similar uh, design to a, a Roman stage because it was used for two weddings that uh, initially it was developed for a family wedding and um, these terraces highlight uh, astilbes that are in the center. These astilbes weren't here during the wedding but they were added later and that there are astilbes that bloom from July all the way until August and um, there are varieties that are full-size ones and the, the ones in August are dwarf varieties. And then uh, the, the, this large um, rhododendron, it's actually two um, rhododendrons merged together, two colors, and that that's the largest rhododendron on the property. And it's a mountain, literally a mountain, that is viewed beyond in the backdrop and the foreground of your experience in this garden are these uh, stairs that bring you up to each terrace. So let me show you the playground climbing equipment, but also standard old-fashioned uh, seesaws and what's called a merry-go-round. And that merry-go-round typically would have a brighter color. It needs to be cleaned up. And um, they all can be seen from this screened-in porch, and they become like sculptures in the garden from that viewpoint. Uh, this is a very peaceful underside of a screened-in porch uh, where there's a Buddha and a beautiful stone, um, a large um, boulder that was left over from the construction of the house. And these stairs that lead up to the playground were added um, using uh, just uh, railroad ties. And I think Barry was known for trying to to find places to, to get railroad ties when they did construction on the railroad and, and nearby and, thing, and things like that. You could follow me up to the roof terrace. Ralphie's coming to join me. You could see the three oaks in the background, but this beautiful skylight was added as part of the pool room uh, to complement the geometry of the gable end of the Allswing house. And together, there's a, a beautiful contrast between the uh, sculptural beauty of the white oaks and the uh, geometry you're experiencing of the skylight and the end of the Allswing house. I just really want to thank Olga for uh, allowing us to, to uh, share, you know, my, my, my father's and family's garden with, uh, with everyone um, and just for, for uh, coming at just like sort of like the, the perfect time when the rhododendrons are just in peak bloom and we're just, you know, so happy that we were able to, to uh, create this video and, and share with, with everyone. And we, and we hope that everyone could help us save this beautiful garden gem um, that surrounds a mid-century modern home um, in Westport. 
and uh, we hope that um, everyone will help us do that.